All right, let's start with the heart of the S19 XP hashboard, the BM1366AL ASIC chip. This little powerhouse is what drives your mining operations, folks. When you're getting low hash rates, that is usually the first suspect. This chip, you want to check any signs of damage or wear. Right here, we have the GT24CO2A EEPROM, storing all crucial configuration data with just two wires. This chip can communicate all it needs to keep things running smoothly. Remember, 2K bits is plenty for this purpose here. Now, you don't want things too hot and your operation to burn out. That's why we have the S75 temperature sensor. It keeps a digital eye on the heat generated from the ASICs, ensuring your hashboard stays cool under pressure. And this is our signal strengther, the SGM8304 operational amplifier. Like turning up the volume on your radio, it boosts the signal to keep data precise and clean. Now let's look at the G337 tantalum capacitors. These are little energy reservoirs keeping power stable and smooth. These are pretty much an unsung hero that supports power conversion with finesse. Now there is an array of different electrolytic capacitors, but the ones we're talking about specifically are rated for 330 microfarads and 47 microfarads. They handle power fluctuations and they ensure that everything from power rectification to AC bypasses is handled without a hitch. Next up, we have the DSK24 Schotsky diode. It basically lets current glide through with ease, managing power and protecting against those peak voltage spikes. Now we're basically in the boost region. So we have the inductor 100. Ever wonder how power stays so smooth? It's all thanks to components like this the inductor 100, storing energy magnetically and releasing it just right. So there's a little variation between the ones without a pick and no pick on these S19 XP hash boards, but you might have an MPS P20 or MPS M18 boost chip. You know, sometimes you need a little oomph in your voltage, especially at the last domain. That's where this chips come in handy, stepping up voltage without stepping out of line in the entire circuitry. Now, if we were in the Wild West, I'm just gonna compare this next diode to being a guardian against voltage spikes. The SMB J19A TSS diode stands for a quick watch and it draws on protection, like literally. It will save your entire hashboard from sudden power fluctuations or surges. So next we have the 2002 and the zero ohm resistors. 2002 is not a zero ohm resistor, but it plays an important role because when they manufacture these boards, sometimes they get lazy and these just connect different ICs. Um, it just makes the whole current flow better instead of just jumping it. But you can think of the 2002 as a jumper and the zero ohm. It just makes diagnostics a lot easier, but basically ensures that electricity flows exactly and where it should be. Now, everyone's familiar with the hashboard data interface. This is where you connect it via the hashboard and the control board. It's basically communication, and this data interface ensures that all parts talk to each other clearly and efficiently, keeping operation sync on your S19 XP hashboard. So here we have the MP2009 and VGML AAH6 LDOs. These both have different roles, but they basically translate the voltage into a different language that is necessary and that is acceptable to these ASIC chips. So they kind of act like smart valves, ensuring that only the smoothest, most stable, low voltage power gets through. So this is a voltage level translator, or you can call it a voltage level shifter. When you have different parts needing different voltages, this is your best friend. It's like a diplomat, ensuring peace and compatibility across the board. Last but not least, we have the crystal oscillator, which is 20 megahertz. It's like a timekeeper 
of our operation, ticking away at 20 megahertz precision, is the game. And this crystal is winning. It's the backbone of every motherboard, every single PCB you can think of. We hope you found this content helpful. If you did, please consider sharing and liking this video to help train and support our industry. Your engagement helps us reach more technicians, enthusiasts, and sharing the valuable knowledge is spread throughout the community. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more upcoming content, where we'll continue to provide in-depth demonstrations and insights into the ASIC repair and diagnostic industry. Thank you for watching and happy repairing. May your repairs be swift and your mining profitable.